Okay, we've got some live pictures coming in from uh, a scout we have over on the uh, the Styx continent. It looks like that tank convoy was uh, going to protect a mobile launch platform of some kind. You can see them setting up there. This poses a grave threat to our security at all. Oh, we've just lost the feed. It looks like they found our scout. Um, you can see them setting up that platform there, and that could be used to launch mobile missiles directly at us. They could be nuclear, they could be orbital, could be anything. We, we definitely need to stop them. Right, so uh, this time round, at the suggestion of uh, J-Boy Casper, we are going to be using an ICBM. Now, it's an ICBM, but a relatively short-range one, because we are only just going over the ocean. It is a different continent, so it is an intercontinental ballistic missile, but it's not a very long distance. So let's just start here using the mech jab to be able to get some nice uh, autopilot on this. I'm going to install mech jab 2 at some point. That's now come out properly, and uh, it looks pretty good. I'm just hoping it's nice and compatible with all the rest of the mods. I'll have to see about that. But I'm using uh, multiple warheads here. I'm putting uh, six of the medium weight uh, Ron Farrah bombs on. Now, most uh, modern ICBMs do have multiple independent re entry vehicles, or MIRVs. Um, these basically allow them to have multiple warheads coming down and allows them to penetrate any missile defenses much better because there's more things for the missile defenses to hit. Basically, it involves saturation. Interestingly enough, the uh, first country to actually properly have uh, an anti-ballistic missile shield was, uh, I think it was Russia. Uh, they deployed one around Moscow. Moscow actually really got ahead of the US in the uh, intercontinental ballistic missile race because immediately after the Second World War, both countries started their own and um, Russia kept going and America pulled out in 48, I think it was deciding they had uh, a very good air force and it was well funded and they didn't really need uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles so they couldn't see the point of them. But uh, after Russia tested its hydrogen bomb in 54, 56 I think, the, the funding suddenly, uh, suddenly jumped up and a few years later uh, America tested its first uh, intercontinental ballistic missile. I mean of course this all comes from the original German sort of uh, V program. Technically it wasn't the V program, it was originally the A program, I can't remember what it stood for, but it was then changed uh, when the V2 came out to make it uh, stand for the Verteltungswaffe 2, or Vengeance Weapon 2, because it sounds more badass. Um, here we go, I'm using mainly liquid fuel for this one because I'm going to need to be able to create the orbit because I'm going to need to get this to hit bang on. As soon as it starts entering the atmosphere, I'm going to have very limited control, so I need to be able to get it perfect. Most modern ICBMs actually do use uh, solid fuel rockets because they don't need to have the small course corrections and so on because the computers have it pre-programmed from the start. It doesn't really need to be that many changes, whereas I'm going to have to be pushing it. Now here you can see I've added parachutes for these. Um, this is because I'm thinking that, you know, if we end up using this, it doesn't go over the ocean and we have to fire it across land or something. We don't want to be dropping bits of rocket on civilian centers. So I'm adding parachutes to these and as they separate, the parachutes will deploy and they'll, you know, nicely, gently land to the ground. Since these are the first stage firing and they've got a, a thrust to weight ratio of about 1.6, I don't expect the solid fuel boosters will get very far from K uh, the KSP at all. Uh, KSC at all. Um, I'm expecting them to, you know, probably pop off a few kilometers up in the air and uh, then we'll start our gravity burn. Right. Let's give this bad boy a try. Right, this is going to be a relatively short video, this one, because, uh, well, either we're going to hit our target or we're not going to hit our target. There's not going to be any flying about. Um... Alright, just check where the target is. I'd say it's about, what'd you say, 110, 115 degrees? See, I'm using the, uh, the mech jib surface to put in the, uh, the heading in the picture. 
Oh yes, and uh, I've I've recently gone past 100 subscribers, and now I'm incredibly close to 200. I have actually just recorded a uh, 100 subscriber video uh, playing Surgeon Simulator. Oh, I got the staging wrong there. Yeah, I, I recently recorded a uh, 100 subscriber video. I might just have to cross out the 100 subscriber and put 200 if we make it to that in time. But uh, I, I put an interesting spin on it. The game Surgeon Simulator, if you haven't seen it, it's a bit crappy but hilarious and it knows it indie game um, where you have one arm and you use it and turn around and try and do surgery really badly and it plays like someone who's got one arm one eye and is incredibly drunk doing surgery so I decided it'd be amazing to play inebriated and we're off so I have done a let's drink surgeon simulator game which I'll be uploading soon in the next few days um I think it's amusing, but at one point I do spend a ridiculous amount of time on one level because every time I kept trying to do the kidney transplant, the kidneys kept going outside the ambulance and I lose them, and that means I have to restart. I could end up just skipping that, and the boosters are away. So you're only about uh, just under four kilometers up when they go, and the parachute should deploy. Yeah, there we go. Nicely. Um, just keep going up here. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, that'll be going up on the channel shortly. And uh, yeah, it's really nice that everyone's been, you know, so you know, really supportive of the comments and so on and asking me to do loads of stuff considering, you know, this is my first actual time trying to make something that anyone finds amusing at all ever in my life on YouTube. No, ever. Um, but yeah, all right, we're starting our proper gravity burn here. I mean, I'm watching the apoapsis up there and uh, trying to get that. Ah, oh, that's a good picture. I mean, of course, when doing something like this, the aerospike engines are... You, you can't beat the aerospike engines, really. I mean, they don't have much vector thrust, or don't, don't think there's any, actually. And other than that, they're, they're just bang on. They've got brilliant fuel efficiency all around. I mean... If you're going to be using them for anything other than just space, you're using the aerospikes. If you're going just for space engines, but you don't need sudden thrust, go with the nuclear. There, there really isn't a, a reason to have many other engines in, in KSP at the moment. Maybe somewhat overbalanced, but not ridiculously so. It gets better when you actually get the mods to add more engines in, because then you get a few more options to jazz it up a little bit. But still, I tend to end up using the aerospace. They also look really cool. Ooh, you can see our fuel's getting very low there. I think we'll have enough to make it there. This is always going to be tight on the fuel front. But I didn't think it would be getting this close. I'm not sure how... Well, I suppose since we, we are pretty much okay for a height, that should be enough fuel. It just depends how close we are to the target. Uh, not very close. We're going to need every single drop of this fuel to make it there. Okay, the uh, the blast radius on these bombs, I think I set it to be about 50 meters. But it probably has got it wrong. Basically here, this, this IPCBM is not meant to be nuclear at all. They're, we're just using conventional weapons. We don't want to go and start a nuclear war. We just, you know, they've got a mobile launch vehicle out and it's being fueled as you saw in the videos and there's definitely stuff going on there so we need to preemptively take that out before they can launch something at us um, and while Nicium might be a, a bit overkill we don't have really any options I mean you saw what happened to the gunship uh, there was there was some some Kerbal error and bad things happened uh, if you haven't seen that episode, that's the one directly before this one. Um, I won't spoil it for you. It suffice to say that it didn't go so well. Um, so yes, we now have the problem of this mobile emplacement. So we're going to have to try and land down as, as close as possible. I mean, ideally under 50 meters, but I have 
packed six of these. And if I've got the the blast radius a bit bigger than I expect, then I, I think that's fine. I mean, since we are launching six missiles, or well, six bombs, it weighing about seven tons, I think we could get a decent sized explosive in there, sort of a fuel explosive. Yeah, how much does the mother of all bombs weigh? The Moab, it's meant to be the biggest conventional explosive, although the Russians have said they've built a bigger one. Um, it, it doesn't stand for mother of all bombs. It, it stands for massive ordnance airburst. And it's big and it's painted orange. Or at least the, the demo models I've seen are. Um, but that, that thing's ridiculous. It's meant to destroy something like nine city blocks. Uh, so I think if, if we land anywhere near with this, I think we can just say it was a, a Moab equivalent. I think the Moab weighs a lot more than seven tons, maybe. I don't know. Though I can't imagine... I was to say, I can't imagine many planes carrying more than that. Yeah, I can. I really can. There, I mean, we were talking last week about the C-130 turning into the AC-130 and just putting a, a load of guns on it. Um, there, There's a lot of planes that do that. I can't remember the life of me what it's called. Is it the Stratofortress? It just carries a, a shitload of bombs. Um, not incredibly useful uh, in you know, the current warfare situation as opposed to the AC-130, which is bitching. Uh... Someone did suggest I really should have put the guns on last week and put them on the side rather than on the front. And I, I was just... The reason I didn't do that was I was a bit afraid that I wouldn't be able to keep the turn going at the same time as shooting the gun. Because you need to sort of... You need to coordinate the two. But come to think of it, that would probably been a lot easier than trying to strafe repeatedly and just failing. All right, here, we're going to have to turn north because we need to try and sort this out. At the moment, I think we're headed a bit south by a few hundred metres. So try and correct this. Ideally, we shouldn't be making such dramatic turns. We should be on target already, and no no real ICBM would ever do this. This would just be silly. It's about now, or was it just beforehand? Yeah, we've just passed the upper. So it's about now that normal ICBMs would be releasing uh, metal strips and so on to spoof radar detectors or even decoy warheads. And just turn back towards target. I do quite like the looks of this ICBM. It's slimmed down, it's not much fuel, and we're... We're really running low on fuel! Oh god! Uh, <laughs> this is going to be really embarrassing if I land just half a kilometre shy in the water. I wonder if the bombs go off and hit the water. Let's not hit the water. That, that, that would be highly disappointing. Did it just glitch there for a second? Hmm. Huh. Oh, I've still been having some issues with uh, the laser mod. Um, it's definitely slowing the game down a bit. I might strip it out and do a reinstall for the next one. But the uh, the new B9 Aerospace pack has come out, and oh my god, some of those are pretty. Uh, some of the new cockpits it's added are amazing. It's also added some new hull segments and bits and bobs, which are going to be really useful because I think after this video we're headed to space and start making some proper space militarized vessels. And that's going to be really interesting because, frankly, I suck at making planes. Um, I mean, I thought we are going to have real trouble with this ICBM. But it seems to be flying okay. We'll, we'll get to know when it gets properly deeper into the atmosphere. But when I've done this sort of thing before and tried to get a, an engine to be pushing the vehicle down towards the ground, for some reason it's always flipped out the other way to the way the drag model works. It makes the engine point downwards because it automatically assumes, you know, you want to be slowing down. But I, I don't see why. Surely the aerodynamic, you know, nose should be pointing down rather than the engine. But so far it's working, and let's just hope this carries on. That, that's why I did throw the SAS unit on there. Oh, ah. Uh, somehow we've hacked into a camera at the launch site. All, uh, all Elysium ICBMs now uh, come fully equipped with a uh, hacking suite. And now we're... Ooh, that is a pretty picture. I think it's time to release the nose cone get our weapons out yeah oh that looks beautiful these re-entry effects I, I think they were a little bit overrated when they came out people were just like oh my god have you seen them I mean yeah they're good but I mean 
this makes it worthwhile. Look at that. And it looks like we're on target. I, I hope I haven't jinxed it. And Mac effects, we're under 10k. Oh, it looks like it's going to be a hit. Okay, I'm going to release the bombs at the last minute, just in case they collide against each other or against my... Uh... Ooh. Oh, it's wobbling. Wobbling. Yes! Oh! Take that. Let's have a look around, see what we've actually got and see what's, uh, what's survived. Uh, it's a bit of debris over there, but I think that was from last time anyway. Yeah. So, we, we did it! Uh, we destroyed the launch vehicle and the, the four tanks that we somewhat failed to get last time. So this time it's a success. Illicit Empire 2, bad guys 1. Um, yeah, uh, please like and subscribe if you liked the video, and if you didn't, you know, post in the comments and, you know, tell me what I can improve. Um, yeah, and it, I'm really enjoying making videos for you guys, uh, I'm glad you like them, and yeah, I hope to continue doing this. Um, I have got one bit of bad news, there weren't any crazy physics glitches for me to add in on this video, so normally in the segment at the end where I put the crazy physics glitches I've had, uh, I, I have nothing. I have nothing. I'm sorry. I've let you down. What I do have is where that other tank went the other week when one disappeared. So let's have a look at that now. Here we go. Now you can see on this path, this path here, there are definitely five tanks. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. There are five tanks, and suddenly there only seem to be four, and there are bits of debris, and we definitely didn't hit one, like we'd already passed it by the time it exploded, so somehow our wake caused the destruction of a tank. So yeah, I suppose this counts as a physics glitch, but uh... Interestingly enough, I did actually go check the bits of debris to see what was left, and the only bit that was left was the cockpit and a bit of landing gear. So, I guess we did take it at tank last week. Sort of. Either way, uh, I've been Enter Elysium, and I will catch you next time.